Anne and her son Francis moved from London to Aldwinter in April in the spring, which obviously is very, very symbolic of the new life that Cora's beginning. She's been finding herself very, very trapped in her marriage and trapped in an urban setting where she felt the natural world, which she'd loved as a young woman, had been denied her and kept away from her. So when she goes down to Aldwinter and she finds spring burgeoning in the hedgerows, it represents this new life that she's encountering. When she married, she was forced to conform to an idea of what a good Victorian wife should be, tightened up in corsets and kept away from the mud where she'd like to play. Liberated from all of this by the death of her husband, she finds herself irresistibly drawn to nature because she was a child of nature when she was younger and this represents to her a great sense of freedom and strangeness and wonder. And when she's out on the Essex marshes, she finds strangeness and beauty everywhere. Everything seems to her to be wild and free rather than the constrained and polite life that she'd been forced into from a very, very young age. At the heart of the novel we have a woman who seems to be very, very modern, so she is not kept inside a room where she's endlessly hemming handkerchiefs and dressed in black mourning for her husband for 30 years, but she is interested in politics, she's interested in science, she has liberty to go out and pursue her interests. And what I wanted to write is a corrective to the idea that Victorian women were terribly repressed, very shy, locked indoors in a kind of gilded cage. So I'm really, really pleased by the reaction to Cora and um, I hope that it can help to correct some of our ideas of what Victorian womanhood was like. <laughs>